All right, so next we're going to talk about the spinocerebellar tracts. Uh, so there are three of them, dorsal spinocerebellar, cuneocerebellar, and ventral spinocerebellar tracts. And these are all tracts that have to do with unconscious proprioception of the body. So remember, conscious proprioception of the body comes from the dorsal columns, uh, which we discussed previously, but unconscious proprioception comes from these three guys. Uh, so as always, I set up my blocks here. Uh, the cortex, diencephalon, and midbrain aren't really relevant. Uh, but within the pons, medulla, and spinal cord, we have a lot of structures that are important here. So first, in the spinal cord, we want to look at a couple structures. First, the dorsal and ventral spinocerebellar tracts, which are found laterally here. Um, it's important to note Clark's nucleus, which I don't have histology, but I'm sure you've seen a picture of a large nucleus here in the thoracic cord. Uh, we also have to note the anterior white commissure, which can be found right here. And then um, we also need to, no, we can't forget about our fasciculus cuneatus um, and also gracilis, specifically cuneatus. Um, when we get into the medulla, we can still see our dorsal spinocerebellar. And also it's not labeled, but our ventral spinocerebellar is right here. And then uh, we remember our nucleus, uh, gracilis and cuneatus are here. But now we can also note an accessory cuneate nucleus, which will be very relevant in this. And then finally, when we get into our pons, um, we just have to be able to recognize our cerebellar peduncles entering the cerebellum. Uh, so it's a little hard to see on histology. And this one, we have middle and then inferior and superior. Uh, that's something that's much more visible grossly. I'd make sure you're comfortable with that. Okay, so let's draw these guys. So first one I'm going to focus on is the dorsal spinal cerebellar uh, tract. So this is unconscious proprioception again, but specifically fine unconscious. Um, and this will be in the lower extremity. So we'll start here in the lower extremity. And go in like most of these ones, we're going first through our dorsal root ganglion. Again, remember pseudo unipolar, not synapsing there. Then we'll go into the spinal cord and synapse at that level within Clark's nucleus. Remember, Clark's nucleus is part of Rex lamina 7, but it's uh, very specific for the dorsal spinal cerebellars. This time it will not decussate, it will stay ipsilateral. I'll travel up through my dorsal spinal cerebellar tract. We'll ascend through that tract all the way through the medulla until it enters the caudal pons, at which point it will go through the inferior cerebellar peduncle to enter over here, which I've drawn the cerebellum and it's gonna synapse within the vermis paravermis, which is this region in the middle, on deep cerebellar nuclei. Uh, you'll learn more about this later. Right now, just remember, deep cerebellar nuclei within the vermis and paravermis. Okay, so next track we'll talk about is our cuneo cerebellar. Same thing as our dorsal spinal cerebellar, again, being fine proprioception, it's just that this is for the upper extremity. So we'll start here in the upper extremity. Moving out. This time it does not synapse on Rex lamina 7. Instead, it will hop on to your fasciculus cuneatus, uh, which is part of your dorsal columns, remember. And it will ascend into the medulla and synapse on the accessory cuneate nucleus. So this accessory cuneate nucleus. At this point then, it will stay ipsilateral and kind of tag along with the uh, dorsal spinal cerebellar tract entering into the inferior cerebellar peduncle and traveling again to the deep cerebellar nuclei of the vermis and paravermis. So remember, both of these are ipsilateral, both of them are fine. Uh, the last one we have is the ventral spinal cerebellar tract. This is for gross unconscious proprioception, uh, primarily of the lower extremity just because there isn't a lot of gross 